Great. So now I'm going to show you a demonstration which I find one of the most mind-boggling demonstrations that I have ever seen. We do have a circular track. You have it right in front of you. That is a circle, although you may not think it is, but it is. And that circle has a radius which, according to, manu to the manufacturer, is 115 meters with an uncertainty of about, I think it's about 5 meters. It is extremely difficult to measure. And even during transport, you think it could change. Let me try to clean this a little better. And so the radius of this, the radius of curvature of our arc, which is also an air track, equals 115 plus or minus 5 meters. So we can calculate now what the period of oscillations is. The whole track is 5 meters long. So half the track is about 2.5 meters. So the angle theta maximum is approximately 2.5 meters, which is half the length of the track, divided by 115, and that is an extremely small angle. That is about 1.2 degrees. Because this is in radians and this is in degrees. So the angle is very small, so we should be able to make a perfect prediction about the period. And I'm going to do that. I take 2 pi times the square root of r over g, and r is 115. 115, I divide it by g. I take the square root, I multiply by 2, I multiply by pi, and I get 21.5 t. And this is a prediction. equals 21.5. The uncertainty in R is about 4.3%. Since we have the square root of R, that becomes 2.2%. So if I multiply that by 0 0.022, I get an uncertainty of about 0.47. Let's call this 0.5 seconds. So this is a hard prediction what the period of an oscillation should be 21 and a half plus or minus a half second. Now I'm going to observe it, and we're going to see what we're going to, how this compares. I don't, want to, I don't want to oscillate it 10 times. That will take three, four, five minutes. That's too long. It is not really necessary because my reaction time is 0.1 seconds. So even if I did only one oscillation, that would be enough to see whether it is coincident with that consistent with that number. However, it is such a beautiful experiment. It's so much fun to see that object go back and forth in 21 seconds that I will go, for your pleasure and for my own pleasure, I will go three oscillations. Not that it is necessary, but I will do it. 3t is going to be something, plus or minus, and this is my reaction time, which is 0.1 seconds, and then we can all divide that by three, and then, of course, the error will go down by a factor of three, and we will see whether this number agrees with this one. All right, can you imagine someone making a track like this, air track, with a radius of 115 meters? I mean, what is this? This may be 8 meters, 115 meters. That is something like 10 times higher, more, 15 times higher than this ceiling. Amazing that people were able to do that. In fact, nowadays you can't even buy this anymore. This is probably some 50 years old, if not older. I have to get the, the air flowing. Out of all these holes, there are many, many small holes in here that you cannot see. The air is now blowing. And this object is going to be put on here. And just because of gravity, it will go. That's all it is. Only gravity it will do work. Here's the timer, and we're going to time it. I will start it off first, and then when it comes back to a stop, I will start the time, because that's for me a very sharp criterion. When the object comes back and comes to a halt here, it's very easy for me to start the timing. You may notice as you watch that some of the amplitude will decrease, because there is, hold it, hold it, hold it, 
because there is, of course, a little bit of friction. It's very little, but it is not zero. Enjoy this. Just look at it. Isn't this incredible? It just goes simply by gravity. It's like a pendulum which has a length of 115 meters. It's about to complete its first oscillation. It goes back. Actually, some of you may be able to see the curvature. You can really see that it is not straight. So we're coming up to the second. I better get back in position. So when it stops here, it has made three complete oscillations. Sixty-four point oh five. Let me turn this off. So three T equals sixty-four point oh five. I'm lazy, 64.05, I divide that by 3, that is 21.35, plus or minus 0.03, it's exactly in agreement with the prediction, with the uncertainty of the prediction. I have something very similar, and that is, again, a curved track. It's not... I hope I can retrieve that ball, it would be nice. Hmm. What happened? Boy. Have to be... Gee, what's happening here? Oh yeah, got it, got it, got it. Whew. Tricky to make a hole in here. This is an arc. Not unlike this one, there's a, more, a little bit more friction. And in this case, the radius is 85 centimeters. So, we can calculate what the maximum angle is. Radius is 85 centimeters, and the arc to the edge is about 20 centimeters. So we have now a situation like this. So R equals 85 centimeters, and this here is approximately 20 centimeters, so theta maximum is roughly 20 divided by 85, and that is something like 13 degrees. 13 degrees is not a bad situation, because the difference between the cosine theta and 1 minus theta squared over 2 is less than a hundredth of a percent. It's that small. So I can make a prediction of the period of this oscillation, predict, and you can go through exactly the same exercise. You take 2 pi times the square root of r over g, and you find 1.85. The uncertainty of this radius is, of course, not very large, but we are not certain about the radius to about 1 centimeter. So it's 85 plus or minus 1 centimeters. So that's about a 1.2% error. And so the error then in the prediction will be 0.6%, since it's about 0.01 seconds. So I expect this is my prediction. Now, I really want to challenge this 0.01, and so now I'm going to make the observations, and surely I'm going to do it now 10 times, because then the uncertainty will be 0.1 seconds, that's my reaction time, and so I have the final period to an accuracy of 0.01 seconds, and so we can compare these numbers directly. And this is what I will do now. I have here the timer, and I'm going to oscillate that back and forth, and that should only take 20 seconds. Zero it. We started here. We have great confidence in physics, right? We believe in physics. We believe in the conservation of mechanical energy. Start. Are you counting? Is this two? Yeah, is this three? Four. I don't believe you. Okay, we start again. 
Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm getting nervous, eight, nine, ten. Holy smoke! 22.7 seconds. It should have been 18. 22.7 seconds. There must be something fundamentally wrong with the conservation of mechanical energy. Or is there something else? And what is the difference between the two experiments? Excuse me? Oh, no. The friction is so low, that is not the reason. It's a huge difference. Think about it when you take your shower this weekend. There is a huge difference between this object moving and that object moving. And when you find out, that is the reason why that is way slower, not friction. See you next Wednesday.